Now, your forecast first, sponsored by Natex Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. Pretty nice day across central Illinois with low humidity values, comfortable temperatures, and that is the beautiful blue skies with just a dotting of clouds on the roofing dog at Bratcher Weather Camera. 82 degrees right now with clear skies, lots of sunshine, no issues out there. Things are going to stay very comfortable for us. 85 in Effingham, 84 in Springfield. And as we go throughout the course of tonight, we're going to see temperatures actually cool off maybe in some areas to the 50s, believe it or not. We'll talk more about that in the forecast. WCA3 News starts right now. Now from WCIA3 News. Down deep inside, I knew that call was going to come Sunday. Her sister was brought to the ER with serious injuries, who is now accused of her murder. I want my daughter to live on in these boys. She was killed in a random shooting. How her name is living on through others helping clean up the streets. We have two weeks to figure out daycare and work and school and family. These workers are having their schedules changed. Why they say it's not only unfair, it could be dangerous. You're watching your local news leader. This is WCIA 3 News at 6. Unfortunately, he convinced her that he loved her, no matter what the consequences were. And this time, those consequences were deadly. A central Illinois man is facing murder charges after his girlfriend died after being beaten. Good evening, I'm Jennifer Roscoe. Toby Lane told investigators he found his girlfriend hurt in the woods in Cumberland County, so he took her to the ER. Bridget Duncan was later flown to Urbana, where she died at the hospital. State police say probable cause connects Lane to the murder. WCI3's Courtney Bunting is live in our newsroom. Courtney, you talked to the family. They have to be heartbroken. Absolutely, Jennifer. No one wants to see this happen to someone they love. But they did say they want her story of her life to have an impact. Down deep inside, I knew that call was going to come Sunday. And no matter how much you prepare yourself for it, you're never ready for it. And I just hope that some other family member doesn't have to go through what we've went through. That call came this week for Bridget Duncan's family when they found out she died at an Urbana hospital. Her boyfriend, Toby Lane, is charged with her murder. He told state police he was with her in woods like these in Cumberland County. He said he left because she got sick, and when he returned, she was seriously hurt. Bridget suffered multiple fractures to her face, including a broken eye socket, a broken jaw, fractured ribs, brain bleeds, and multiple bruising to her legs, which are indicative of being held down. Investigators say probable cause led them to believe Lane was responsible. Duncan's sister, Angel Santangelo, says Duncan went to Casey Westfield High School. She says Duncan struggled with addiction for years and that her addiction was the only reason she was involved with Lane. Unfortunately, my sister's life was taken by somebody who was supposed to love her. It was violently taken by somebody that was supposed to love her. But despite her fight, she still had an impact on people. Even when she was deep in her addiction, she was still helping people, and that's what she wanted to do. Santangelo hopes that by sharing her sister's story, it will encourage other people to get help for their loved ones or themselves. I don't want my sister's death to be in vain. I'm hoping that by telling her story, it'll help somebody. Duncan is survived by her three children. Lane is back in court in two weeks. Live in the newsroom, Courtney Bunting, WCIA 3, your local news leader. All right, thank you. A $50 million lawsuit is headed to court five years after an inmate at the Macon County Jail died. In a formal complaint, the family of Michael Carter Sr. says he was sent to the jail in 2015. They say Carter's prescribed diabetes medication was taken away from him during booking. The complaint says he got sick and wasn't given the emergency medical care he needed and then died. A former student at the U of I's Police Training Institute has been charged with sexual abuse and aggravated battery. The Champaign County State's Attorney says 38-year-old Brian Sample attacked a fellow student. The report says he inappropriately touched her on the way home. After having drinks, she told him no. The victim told police he then grabbed her when they were out of the car and forcibly kissed her. She was able to run away to her apartment to call police.
A former Muhammad man was sentenced to 20 years in prison for raping a child under the age of 13. 43-year-old Gregory Reed pleaded guilty last month. The assaults happened over several years, starting in 2006. He's already serving 10 and a half years for aggravated child pornography. Five teenagers are in trouble on gun charges. The Champaign County Street Crimes Task Force arrested a 16-year-old boy on Weber Street in Urbana on a warrant for unlawful possession of a handgun. In Champaign County, juvenile court, a 16 and 17-year-old from Urbana, each pleaded guilty for unlawful use of a weapon. Earlier this month, they were stopped at University and High Cross Road with two others in the car. Four guns were found. 18-year-old Prentice Turner and 19-year-old Rodre Bailey Ross both pleaded guilty to possession of a loaded gun. This is a follow-up for you. A father who lost his daughter to gun violence started a program to prevent kids from going down the wrong path. Now those teenagers are making a difference in their community. W Sing I3's Jamie Mays shows you how. These teenagers are clearing out the old. We get to see our friends and come work in the morning instead of just sleeping in. And they're making way for something much greater to grow in the process. It's all in honor of Shamila Sanders. That was my baby. My baby daughter, she was 22 years old. Shamila Sanders was shot near the Garfield underpass in June and died. Her father, Shemuel Sanders, started Shamila's outreach program in her honor. Students aged 13 to 17 years old are a part of it. It hurts me at night when I lay down, I see her. So when I'm with these boys, that give me that comfort. The students are learning. Teamwork, social skills. I think it's awesome. I think the program is amazing. And they're getting paid to clean up their community. That's why we started this outreach, to try to reach these youth, keep them out of trouble. They started with about 20 teenagers, and now they have at least 30 participating. Organizers say they can see the difference that it's making in them. It's giving them hope that people really care about them. And so, like, it's a lot of, you know, male role models that's not in their lives, fathers, grandfathers, brothers, cousins. And so by us coming together as a community, I feel like they see that. So we can't be one big community without violence. And though Shamila may not be here to see it, Sanders says his daughter's name will not be forgotten. I don't want this to happen to no, none of them. That was devastating to me. Um, and I want my daughter to live on in these boys. Indicator Jamie Mays, WCIA 3, your local news leader. The teenagers participating are paid through community sponsors and donations. So far, they have raised around $12,000, but Sanders is still trying to raise another $7,000 for the program. A group of custodians with the U of I are pushing back against shift changes. The school says they're needed because of the pandemic. WCIA3's Karina Rubio has the story. They forced me on the shift that I'm currently on, and now they're forcing me off of the shift. Mary Matthews has cleaned campus buildings for the past eight years. She and about 200 other workers say the university is making them change their schedules as a way to better clean buildings when people come back to school. It's disrupting everybody's lives, and we have two weeks to figure out daycare and work and school and family. We don't even know where we're going to go. One night we may be in this building, the next night we might be in that building. We're also concerned about our exposure to coronavirus. The U of I is getting rid of some shifts, adding new ones and changing the times of others. Employees say the change came with very little notice. Custodial workers were supposed to meet Thursday morning outside the doors of the Illini Union to protest but decided to push it back. Instead, they joined in on the Board of Trustees morning meeting to voice their concerns and further proved their point with an afternoon protest outside the services plant building. We have come up with several other solutions um, that would not disrupt hardly anybody's lives. Some of those solutions include expanding existing shifts and requiring the newest employees or those on probation to work the added hours instead of moving everyone around. We're kind of low man on the totem pole. We're janitors and we, we still want to be heard. We're people too. Reporting in Champaign, Karina Rubio, WCI3, your local news leader. The university has the power to make these changes for safety reasons, but workers say they will continue to protest if the changes go through. There's been an uptick in cases in one county when it comes to COVID-19. Why officials are looking at more than just the numbers. Also tonight. By returning to campus prematurely, we would be exposed to more people. Faculty and staff are making a demand about what college should look like come fall. 
And a very nice Thursday across central Illinois. The sunshine, very pleasant. The temperatures, comfortable and humidity, well, tolerable for the middle of July. As temperatures, again, are into those lower 80s uh, right now. When we come back, we're going to be talking about how things are going to be changing, though, as hot temperatures arrive for the weekend, unlike the ones we had today. Stay tuned.